this um, this is based on um, a heritage lottery project which we are doing um, all about the lost communities of Sheppey in particular the lost community at Warden the lost community at Elmley and the lost community at Westminster. I know there are others but they're the ones that we are concentrating on. You will find some images in your program um, and we are going to start with a song that you will all know. Uh, we'll sing it to you first and then you can all join in, yep. heartily and lustily. Yes, please. One, two, three, lost, lost, lost forever, lost, lost, lost forever, lost, lost, lost forever, lost but not forgotten. Sliding down the muddy cliff edge, sliding down the muddy cliff edge, sliding down the muddy cliff edge, lost but not forgotten. All together, lost, lost, lost forever, lost, lost, lost forever, lost, lost, lost forever, lost but not forgotten. Sliding down the muddy cliff edge, sliding down the muddy cliff edge, sliding down the muddy cliff edge, lost but not forgotten. Oh, hello Maud. Hello Rachel, how are you? Oh, I'm well. Oh, I don't know why I haven't seen you for ages. No, well I, I just walked up here, yeah. up to Warden, you to see you. From, from that's from Elmley. You're still living, you're still living down I'm there, yeah? still living at Elmley, but I don't know for how much longer. No, oh, oh. Well, no. Why? Why? Yes. Yeah, yes. I know, I know. Well, you but know? while I was on the way, I met a man and he was asking me, where's the church at Warden? And I said, church at Warden? There's no church at Warden. And he said he thought that there was. Well, you must know. Oh, do you know what? I think there was at one time. Oh. And I seem to remember it was called St James's Church. Oh, St James's it was, Church. Yeah, I saw a picture of it. Do you know what? It was a beautiful church. But do you know what happened to it? No. It went over the cliff edge. Over the cliff edge? Yep. Do you know what? Those cliffs... They're always wearing away. They're wearing away and they're still wearing away. Wearing away. Well, do you know, I heard a story that sometimes at night you can hear the church bell ringing. Well, do you know from what? I've never heard it, but I wouldn't be at all surprised. I'm sure some people have. You know how the rumours go around. I yeah. know. And then there was a, an old lady and she, she lived right down at Shellness and she walked all along the coast up to where Walden is and after the church had slid down the cliff edge she used to go there and pick up skulls 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 oh that's skulls creepy isn't the it graveyard. Yeah. and then she took them back back to her little cottage at Shellness and she put all the skulls along the window ledges oh. and all up the stairs and she put candles in them. That must have been really creepy at night. You know what, I'd love to go and see that, wouldn't I you? I would too, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, I like that sort of thing. I reckon she thought it would keep the kids away. Well, I, th I think she was probably right, yeah, yeah. They wouldn't want to go near that, would they, really? They you wouldn't. Know. <laughs> but there was also, I read this in a book, there was a man and he was called Edward Jacobs yeah. and in the 17 something or others he when that cliff went down he dug up he was like a great hairy elephant a hairy elephant oh you mean a mammoth yes yeah big tusks great big yeah big woolly hairy thing yes yeah, yeah. And, and 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 then other people that they picked up Oh, there's shark's teeth. Yeah, lots and, of those, um, lots of those. You just see them. Yeah. Crocodile bones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and all kinds of 
of tropical animals. Yeah, well, because there was a sea there. Did you know that? Did you know that? He must have been a paleontologist. Oh, a paleontologist. He yes, yes. Oh, I right. think he, said, he, he found, didn't he find some kind of bird as well? Like a duck bill bird. What, like a but sort it was, of dinosaur? It bird. was a dinosaur, but it had a well. duck bill. Yeah. Imagine finding that at Warden. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> it yeah. would. It yeah, would. It would be amazing. But no, no, but now we're talking about that cliff, you know, that cliff edge. I seem to remember at one time that I went up there and there was this place called Warden Manor. Yeah, and it was lovely, it's a beautiful house. And it's been there a long time, it's been there for hundreds of years. Yes. And just after the time that you're talking about, you know, Edward Jacobs, somewhere along of the back end of the 1700s, 1790, well, the Lord of the Manor there was called Sir John Sawbridge. Oh, now. He was a really interesting character, and do you know why? No, why? Well, he was a magistrate, yeah, which is lovely, yeah, yeah, fine, upstanding, pillar of the community as they are. But do you know what else he was? What was he? He was the leader of a smuggler's gang. Smugglers? So talk about poacher and gamekeeper, <laughs> or gamekeeper and poacher, whichever way you want to put it. But do you know, you know, I reckon that's how he got away with it all. Then he did then. Yeah, so he led this gang and they had their headquarters and it was up the Minster Cliff. You know where the Royal Oak? Royal Oak Inn? Yes. 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 That's where their headquarters were. And they used to bring all the smuggled goods up the cliff. Yeah, and hide it there. Well, this one time he got word from the excise men that they were on their way and they were coming oh. to nab them. So, oh. what do you think he did? What did he do? I it bet he scarpered, didn't he? He <laughs> scarpered and left the scarpered. rest of the gang to face the music. Yeah. So what he did, he got on his horse and he galloped along the cliff edge and he went back to Warden Manor and he ran upstairs and he, he kept his boots and he kept his bricks on. But he jumped into bed, he put his <laughs> nightcap on Spurs on and everything. And spurs too, yeah. And he pulled the night shirt, the, the, the night clothes right up to his chin. And then they ran in, and there they found him. Huh. Innocent as the day, Mr. Magistrate, who told them off something rotten <laughs> for disturbing his sleep. Well. The cheek of it, the cheek of it. And you know what? He got away with it for a long time. And I reckon it's like backy for the person, you know, oh, brandy for the, for the clock, all yes. of that. The whole area, he had it sewn up. Ah. But he didn't get away with it forever. No? No, no. Because one day he was riding along the cliff edge and he fell off his horse. Oh. And he injured himself and three days later he died of his injuries. Ah. And it's said that if you go out on a dark night, stormy night, you will see him riding along the cliff on his stallion. A ghost. A ghost. <gasps> so he's obviously never had rest. He's no. never had his rest. No. So I reckon he got his just desserts there. Sounds he? like it. <laughs> he really did. Yep. But while we're on the subject of Warden Manor, a lot more recently, hundreds of years later, it was used during World War I for the soldiers. Oh. So it was like rest and recreation, some R&R &R for the soldiers coming back from the front. Mm -hmm. And it was used by an organisation who were called TOG H. Wow. Now, that is, that is a, funny a funny name, name, isn't it? And I've always wondered what it meant. So I looked it up. Now, TOG H, okay, their headquarters was in London and it was called Talbot House. And they were a very upstanding, oh. you know, organisation, a Christian yeah. organisation. But because it was army people that they looked after, the army people shortened it to TH. Now, some of those army people were signal men. So in the signals, T is talk. Oh. So it became talk H. H. And it's been that ever since, 100 years. Well, well, well. And it's been used by the members all the way up. Since, oh, in the 60s, for holidays. Well, nice and it place was to go. A Warden. very nice place lovely. to go. Lovely. It had all sorts of things, you know. It had a putting green and it had a lovely pond and they used to swim there. They used to 
played tennis, and they had artists coming down sometimes. Well, and this particular holiday, one of the artists drew a big witch on the refectory wall. A witch. A witch. And a witch on the boomstick. And they wrote a little poem about the owner. And his name was Vic Martin. He was a real character. <laughs> right? And it's, it went, Here we serve warden hags, casting spells in paper bags, curses on you witches all, who made poor Vic drive through the wall. Well. So it makes you wonder, doesn't it? That it makes you I wonder. I think what happened yes. is he must have had a little accident and he's knocked a wall down. And, they, and it shows you they had a lot of affection for him to do that. They did. Now yes. what I don't know is whether that is still there. Oh, that would be interesting. Because after that, right. it became a monastery. Oh, would you believe it? Monks and nuns, 50 of them. They moved in and it was something like the um, immaculate part of the sorrowful Mary or something <laughs> along those lines anyway. Uh, and they, yeah, they used it as a monastery. Yeah. Now, I wonder what they thought and they walked in there, they saw that, that on the wall. That witch on the wall and all the hags. Yeah, that would be, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? It that would, would be, it would. But it's all lost now. It's all lost now. Lost. Yeah, yeah. Lost. And the thing is, that could go over the cliff, because it it's could. only a few hundred yards away from the, from the edge. And there have been lots of things that have gone over. Yes. You know, the post office went, the bungalow went, and very recently, in the, a couple of years ago, what? I read in the paper, yeah? there was this house on the edge. What do you reckon it was called? Well, what was it called? It was called Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger? Which is tempting fate, <laughs> let's is. face it. It's tempting fate. Well, this lady bought it in all good faith. Oh, it was going to be good for a long time. She had five kids. Well, she thought nothing of it. And then she started hearing some creaks and groans. And thought, oh, well, it's a, you know, that's what houses do. Then she noticed the crack going up to her front gate. Oh, and she did begin to wonder. And then they were sitting having their tea and the blind fell off the window. And then the hole at the back of the house slid down the cliff. Slid down the cliff. And so they had to get the fire brigade, the fire brigade had to get them out, and that was it. And they lost everything. They lost their memories. Lost. And, you know, and that's what's happening. Wow. Things are sliding down the cliff. Lost. Lost. Well, it's time to sing again now, It is. Then. It's time to sing. Let's first about Elmley. One, two, three, four. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost but not forgotten. Schoolhouse stands, but where's the children? Schoolhouse stands, but where's the children? Schoolhouse stands. But where's the children? Lost but not forgotten. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost but not forgotten. So, Elmley, now there's a place. Ooh, atmosphere. Atmosphere. Yeah. Virtually nothing left no. there whatsoever. Just a few little foundations. A few and little foundations mm -mm. apart from the ruins of the schoolhouse. And that's still just about standing. No church. Nope. No no houses. Yeah. No. It was built originally there used to be a brickworks there where they made bricks. Because oh. same as the, the clay up at yeah. Morden. Yeah. The clay was great for making bricks, yeah. just like Sittingbourne and down Milton Creek. Yeah. But that didn't last long. Then they opened up a concrete factory. Right. And that was quite a big affair. What it was, was, called, what was the it called Turkey Turkey Concrete Factory. <laughs> That's a strange name. Nobody <laughs> knows what the turkey's got to do with it. No. no. So then they there was lots of houses built yeah. and of course there were loads of children, weren't there? Yeah and they needed to have a school. Yeah. Well, first of all, they put them in the church yeah. and in the vestry, but there soon wasn't room for them it all It was in bursting. There, bursting at the seams. So they decided to build them a school. They built them a lovely school and a schoolhouse for the schoolmistress and a path so what that she that could for? walk along without getting her skirts wet. Ah, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they thought of everything. They did. Yes. They did. 
And this carried on for, oh, I don't know, 50 odd years? Hmm? Till 1902, I think it was. Right. All of a sudden, uh, gone. Shut, the, shut the factory. Right. It's no a work. very common story, that. No work yeah. at all. No work. And all the houses, they've been lovely houses for them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they put them a pub. Well, of course, of course Built they had a pub. pub. Yes. yes, and everything. And now, houses gone. Yeah, that's the ruins of the school. Yeah, but I I heard that that the church they actually pulled down the church, and then they moved the tombstones. So the tombstones from the graveyard went to All Saints Church in East in Church. In East Church. Yeah. Yes. But what I'm not sure is whether they moved the bodies. Oh, I think the bodies I are suspect still buried. I that the bodies are still yes, there I'm under sure the marshes. They are. Yeah, yes. that's sad, isn't it? It is very sad. sad. No one yes. knows now. Yeah, yeah. But did you know that on Elmley there is a royal connection? A royal connection? Yeah. Mm. yeah. This was in the time of King James II. Now, King James was wanting to escape into exile, so he was going to go across to France, and he worked out a plot to be able to do that. And he came down to Elmley, so he stayed at Kings Hill Farm. Kings Hill? On Sheppey, yeah, yeah, ah. in, on Elmley, um, really near where, where the church was. Yeah. Yeah. And the King's Ferry Bridge. King's Ferry Bridge, yeah. So he stayed there for a bit and then he was going to go across to Orr on a rowing boat. Well, they made it across to the mainland to Orr, but they got spotted. Ooh. Now, he didn't get picked up because, guess why? Well, he disguised himself and he disguised uh -huh. himself as a Jesuit priest. Oh, well, they wouldn't pick up a they Jesuit they, priest, yeah. would they? Somehow no. they didn't. Somehow no. they didn't. Ah. So they were on their way to uh, Faversham, but then they were spotted. Oh. Someone must have shot them. Must have um, to Sir Richard Marsh and his men. Now, Sir Richard Marsh picked them up, put them in irons, took them to Faversham and held them at Faversham oh. and then took them back to London where they were in jail again. But, would you believe it, he escaped again. <laughs> and he escaped to Gravesend this time. Oh. And then from Gravesend, he went to Queenborough. That's where we island. were this morning. Where we were this morning. Yes. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then from Queenborough, his friends helped him. So he went in a, a fishing smack and he went across to France. And he never set foot on English soil again. Goodness he was in, me. in exile. Yeah. Yes. So... Lost at Elmley. Lost at Elmley. Next song. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost but not forgotten. Houses crushed but not our memories. Houses crushed but not our memories, houses crushed, but not our memories, lost but not forgotten. Lost, lost, lost forever, lost, lost, lost forever, lost, lost, lost forever, lost but not forgotten. Well, Westminster, it was tragic, you know. Yeah, there was a, a lovely little community in Westminster, very small. There's only about two roads. That's right. Yeah, Montague, Montague, Montague and um, Cromwell. 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 Right. Yeah. yeah. And then they they backed onto the railway line, didn't they? They did. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And there's just a few houses. There was the gas works. Yeah. And the sewage works. And the sewage yeah. works. And that's where a lot. Oh, and they brought the coal worked. in. They used to bring the coal in on the They walls. did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And their sea wall was just there. That's right. Really close. Right. Yeah. So they were right by the sea. Yeah. And um, they came and knocked it down. Yeah. Yeah. What did well, they do? I never understood. Well, that, I, I don't know really. But my friend Daph. This is a picture of my friend Daff when oh, she was lovely. Yeah, 1945 that was. Yeah. And she used to come and visit her auntie Queenie and her auntie Kate. Yeah. 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 Auntie Kate. She lived till she was a hundred. 
But then she was evicted. Yeah. Only lasted a couple of months. Yeah. And that was the end of her. She might have gone on, mightn't she? She might. She might have done. Shame. Shame. Yes. Yeah. They, it was a terrible thing, chucking all the people up. But my friend Daff yeah. told me what happened. Right. She, when she grew up, she worked for the council. Ah. And there was a fella in the council, one of the officers, and he was called John Young. Now, when he was a little nipper, mm. he didn't want to be a steam engine driver. Well, lots of little boys did. He then. wanted to be a demolition man and have a big wrecking ball. You gotta know. Yeah, <laughs> so he was looking out for he, somewhere he could demolish. Oh, dear. He came from Faversham. That explains mm. it then, doesn't it? That yeah. explains it. He decided Westminster was going to be the place mm -hmm. that was going to be demolished. Yeah. And so all the people were thrown out. Yeah, and they just had to go and find other places. Yep, yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah. Oh, there's another one at Daff with her <sighs> with mum. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Montague Road yeah. and the gas works. You can see the gas works. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But, do you know around that area there was lots of bits of waste ground and I think that one of those places must have been where they had the football pitch. Oh yeah. Now, did, you didn't know they had a football team. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, but although they were tiny, at the tiny community they had their own football team and there were two pubs. There was the Medway Tavern and there was the Globe. And they'd meet in one or the other of them to plan their campaigns. <laughs> and they were a very good football team because one year they br they brought back the double. They won the double. Who did they and beat? And they beat then? Gillingham. Beat Gillingham. Which is pretty good. What do you cool. think about it for a tiny team? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this football pitch pitch, if you could call it that, they used to call it their twelfth man. Oh, why do you think that might be? Think about it. You know, they knew their own bit of ground. They knew where all the potholes were. They knew where all the bits of grass that oh, you're going to fall over and stones and chunks yeah. of rock and the rest. Yeah. Of it. So they probably what helped the wind thing sometimes. Probably, yeah, they always yeah. wanted to be. Oh, you have matches on their own ground. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. But yeah, it was like a mark of of what they felt about their community, that they used to call it Wessie. Ah, oh. so it was Wessie Town. That's how it was. Oh, goodness. And, and <laughs> my aunt Sue said that she would not have wanted to grow up anywhere else but in Wessie. Mm. Um, and also, she said that she knew um, her auntie Bess, who had some lovely photographs of the area. And one of these photographs that all the ladies dressed up in the cardigans, you know, and they're knitting and they're sitting along the seawall. Oh. And so you can see, you can think that's how close to the, to the streets, the, the seawall was, yes. very close. Yes. And they're watching their kids, they're having a lovely time in the sunshine, you know, the kids are paddling and everything. And just off the shingle bank, you'd have all the fishermen and they were all lined up fishing for cod. And it wasn't these silly little cod you get now, they were big, ten pound cod. Big. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, well, yes. But the floods. 1953. Yeah, I mean, the whole of Sheerness suffered Did. with the floods. Yeah. And the flooding. Well, it was all along the coast, wasn't it? The east coast. Oh. It was everywhere. Westminster yeah. they got it the worst. They did. Because their seawall was breached. And they had the whole community all lined up with uh, sandbags to breach the hole in the in the seawall. Yeah. It yeah. didn't do them much good because it, they still flooded. Flooded. Yes. And you know, that's reminded me, I read somewhere that there was a young man and he woke up and he found that he was floating on his mattress. So oh. he must have been sleeping downstairs, you know, yes. and, it, so, and he was almost floating away. So that's how high up the, the, the water oh. came. Yeah. yeah. And there was also rationing while that was on, on Sheppey because it was really hard to get onto the island. Oh, right. So there was p potatoes were a pound a person. Potatoes? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't even ration potatoes in the water, the water did they? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the kids used to come along on their bikes, didn't they? They did. And roam the streets. Yeah, this was much later, this was much like in later. the 60s, yes. wasn't it? And sort yeah, of my, my other friend Sue told me about that. Yes, yeah, yes. They used to, and, and they used to, they thought 
the demolition that happened due to the bombing and they used to look for for Some bombs on exploded bombs. Oh, exploded bombs. Oh, exploded bombs. <laughs> God, oh, no health and safety then. No, <laughs> no health and safety. But one of the best stories, there was a little lad, he was called Harry. Yeah. And he was only about seven. And all the children were playing out on that seawall. And a little girl called Ada fell in. Uh, they were always being warned about not playing. Yeah, they were warned, yeah. yeah she always. was the daughter of one of the stokers at the steel work, the, uh, the gas, gas works. The gas works, yeah. that's right. Yeah. But she fell in the water and all the kids were worried. But Harry, presence of mind, he looked around, he looked around, and he found this, an old iron hook, yeah. and he managed to get hold and hook little Ada oh, out. Man. How old was he then? He was seven and she was only about six. Six. Yeah, yeah. Went Friends to medal. Yeah. He was in the paper. They gave him a prize and everything. So they should. They so they it. should. Yeah. Little Harry the Hero, they called him. Yeah. But so now, nothing. Lost. There's none of that. Lost. Lost. Yeah. Yep. So now all there is left. Well, there's not even the gasometers anymore. The gasometers have even went. gone. Yeah. No, well, it's just use it for a few lorries to park up. And the burger van. And the burger van. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's all lost. And that's the end of our story. So yeah. we'll just sing one more rousing chorus. One, more. Yes. one two, three, four. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost, lost, lost forever. Lost but not forgotten. Lost, lost, lost forever, lost, lost, lost forever, lost, lost, lost forever, lost but not forgotten. Sliding down the muddy cliff edge, sliding down the muddy cliff edge, sliding down the muddy cliff edge, lost but not forgotten. Lost, lost, lost forever, lost. Lost, lost forever, lost, lost, lost forever, lost but not forgotten.